Try to make you guys see each other as friends instead of you know coming here and just coming to the meeting, and sit down and not even talking to each other. Just what do you see as things that the county commission does well that you want to continue or maybe grow? You know, I see them following the laws and rules. There's a lot of them. It sounds like. Laura does a wonderful job at uh, doing the homework and, and looking up things and finding things that need to be done. Um, following the procedures that need to be followed to get things where they need to be. What, um, what about this opportunity as commissioner excites you? What, what do you, I guess, what are your goals? What, what do you want to do with this position? Um, I feel I bring a lot to the table as far as working with people, like um, one of the main people that come in here is, seems to be a problem is John Wright, and uh, one instance he brought up where he wanted, where trailers were brought to the landfill and being dumped there, he wanted them to make sure they're coming out of our county, and I thought... <coughs> You know, him and Brian butted a little bit, which they probably should have been handled a little different. Like, where you have to have a moving, uh, when you go to move a trailer, the taxes have to be paid, and you need a license to move it. And I <coughs> should have brought up where it was in our county that the tax had been paid at one time, or it's been abandoned for a long time, and he knew where it came from, so that. John was not mad at each other and they were more at seeing each other eye to eye. So. Okay. Um, there's a lot of communication now. I mean, we do a lot of meetings, right? And But there's a, there's a lot of stuff that's happening where we're using internet and people are emailing stuff in or there's, there's a, we're in a computer <coughs> world. So what's your computer communication skill level? I'm on the internet all the time, surfing 
Craigslist, searching <coughs> eBay to find parts. Uh, you know, Google, Google's everything now. If you need to find something, just get on Google. That's okay. How about writing? Writing letters, like the commission is always writing letters to. They always have to write the letters to somebody, and I think they want to kind of take turns so it isn't the same person <coughs> writing and stuff all the time. Do you, do you have a problem with that? No. Um, with uh, the computer having spell checker and <coughs> helps you with phrases and stuff that aren't right, uh, it makes things a lot easier. It makes people so they don't know how to spell like they should, but it gets the job done right. And okay. Um, you talked about the all the rules that <clears throat> they have to follow. So, what's your level of familiarity with the, with the Montana Code, the Montana statutes, and, and maybe specifically local government issues? Um, as far as the code, I really don't know anything about the codes and books and any of that stuff. I read very little of what uh, okay. books about what the books about. So, um, I mean, you, they have, I think they have like a, when I got elected, I didn't know anything about local government, so I went to this MAKO conference for like three days and learned just a whole bunch of stuff. And so they have, I mean, they have a lot of those things. Are you you're able and willing to go to those training conferences? Yeah. Okay. Um, open government is, is kind of a big issue um, where had, most stuff is done at public meetings and records are open. Have you ever uh, dealt with that? Do you understand kind of what the commission's responsibility is in terms of making making their business open to the public? Yeah, but they need public input. What's going on? And some of the public info is great information that they didn't know ahead of time either. And the public needs to be involved in our decisions. Okay. How about what documents are considered public documents and open to versus those who aren't? Those which aren't. Um, the personal information needs to be kept private to keep people's reputation at hand. So. Okay. And everything else is open? Yeah, I don't know all the laws and the information on all that privacy acts and all that stuff. But. Okay. Have you ever had a situation where you wanted to do one particular thing but you had to do something else due to, I mean, for example, in a county commission job, there's times when they may have a preference to go this way, but they have to they have to make a different decision because of either the law or the best interest of the community or something like that. Have you ever had a situation like that where you wanted to choose one thing and your kind of your duty had you choose something else? Have you talked about that? Yeah, sometimes it's it's easier to get the job done another way and faster and less expensive. But in order to do it the right way, you need to uh, spend the money and time to do it the way it needs to be done. Okay. Um, what what's your perception on employment? Opportunities in in Townsend and Broadwater County. I mean, in terms of, I guess, skilled either young people to stay or skilled skilled workers. Are there job opportunities here? And is there any way? Is there anything the county commission can do to, I guess, help with the employment environment? Yeah, there's not really many jobs for the uh, people coming out of high school to have. They're pretty much packing their bags and going to other cities for the jobs. Uh, you know, we got the sawmill, which is a, a good paying job for a, a younger person to get into and step up in the line plant, but most of them guys are stay there. They they got jobs that just doesn't have good old, you know, a lot of overturn. And you know, you want a loyal local person, usually they'll stay and be around the family. And the community doesn't have that many good jobs for that. Is there anything the commission can do to, to help encourage that? Uh, there was a good point brought up the other day that <clears throat> our school needs to have a little better commuter, uh, computer skills and educate the kids uh, a little more for the uh, community. And for, you know, it's, it's 
it's really hard to make jobs for people uh, without spending a bunch of money that uh, could be spelt, spent elsewhere and keep the public happy. <coughs> So I guess in the in the world of the county county finances, um, what's your what's your understanding of kind of where the county budget is financially, and are there you know, just talk through your philosophy of are there places where we need to save money? How would you approach that? Are there places where you see one issue as a higher priority over other issues? Well, uh, one thing I address uh, would be in the road department. Um, we got a lot of roads, and, and it's really hard on them guys to care of them all but they only work four days a week in the winter time and we have snow uh, wind blows uh, they get you know there's they're a public employee they need to work on Fridays they need overtime on the weekends to get the snow removed for emergency situations that uh, arise and overtime should be granted for that and if you can help somebody and save somebody that's what needs to be done do you see any places where we're, where the county's wasting money or where you would, I guess you would look at it more closely? You know, recycling is very hard to make money on. Um, I don't know the process and everything and what corners they're cutting to try to, I know they, they just change the plastic so they're only taking certain plastics instead of the, all the plastics, so they have people sort the plastics and doing cardboard, and you know it would be way cheaper for us just to throw it all away. But we're trying to do a trying to help the community out and doing a little recycling, and it's costing us money to do it. Question. We didn't have our list, but it was a good question that Kirk asked last time. What What do you see as the time commitment? If you're If you're a county commissioner, what that? I know you got other things going on in life. So how, how do you How much time do you expect to to give to being a county commissioner and then taking care of the other things you have going on in life? I would be fully committed. Uh, I can still get my other jobs done. I got. My nephew that would help me do the other work, he can do it without me. Um, so I'd be fully committed and wouldn't have a problem uh, getting my other job done and keeping this job and putting the time in that it needs to be spent. Okay. So we talked about this. Okay, I just, I guess I'll ask this before I go to the next one. So, are you, do you intend to run for county commissioner or are you applying for kind of just the, the year fill in or? No, I already filed, uh, so I intend on being here and running. Okay. And so even if you don't get appointed, you're still planning on running, is that right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so currently the county commissioners are on a lot of issues, they're deadlocked 1 1. And there's, there's a lot of, uh, I mean, there's, there's county commission meetings where there's fighting, where People are just saying, hey, you guys got to knock this off. And there's, I think, perception among employees and other community that we are, we, we are not in a good situation right now as far as getting business done, as far as courtesy and respect in meetings. And I guess I would just ask, how, how can you come in as the third commissioner who, if there's a lot of one-one votes, you might be the deciding vote one way or another on a lot of issues. How are you going to contribute to helping that situation? Well, I didn't realize this before, and actually in my job, uh, with all my clients, we discuss a lot of the problems in the county because we all live here. And uh, I take in a lot of their input and their the pros and cons. So when I come to make a decision on a one-on-one, -one, I would visit with each one and, and get their, with their opinion and you know, and the people's opinion, and if one of them could had a really good opinion to swing me the other way, I would go 
you know, was down. Otherwise, I would vote. I would vote the way it needs to be voted. That I feel. Okay. How about how about in terms of the the, the comment from the meeting? If you got you're sitting, let's say you're sitting in the middle, you got one person here, one person here, and you're arguing with each other. <laughs> how do you how do you move us to uh, maybe a, a new day in terms of how those are done? I kind of feel like I'm a peacemaker at times for a lot of people, and I like my reputation to be not tarnished. So I don't want people looking at me and saying, oh, this guy has a bad temper, this guy does this, and he just blows up and does, uh, he's not ethical. And I would uh, try to defuse the situation and look at the best for, for both of them and try to get things turned out so we could make our decision and get it the business handled. Have you ever had an example where you had a conflict with somebody and you had to then deal with them and, and how you handle that in terms of getting through the conflict? We asked specifically about if you've had a conflict with a county, with the county or a county employee, but I guess if you, if that's not an example, then an example with somebody else where you had a conflict and how you handled uh, getting past that conflict. I don't really have one with the county. I had one on a roofing job I did. Um, I used, uh, there's different companies that Shingle would use. And I used a Shingle company he wanted to use, but I used a different cap because of the, the vent system we put in. It, you don't want it to blow off in the wind. So I used a different vent system. So I used a different cap because the cap was wider and he, called the company and said that they weren't going to warranty it and stuff. And, and it ended up costing me, you know, four or $500 extra and another day's labor because this roof was a, it was a hip roof. So it's got four sides going up and one side on top. So it had a lot of cap and everything was capped. So I just ended up eating everything and just doing it to make him happy. And so his warranty was covered. In Warranty was going to cover it anyways, but I just didn't want to argue with him about the situation. I wanted to just make him happy. So. <coughs> Does anyone? I skipped a bunch of questions. Does anyone want to jump in at any point? You did skip questions. I bounced around. I have one, Bill. Um, this is. Uh, I'm just going to read it because it's really well written. I think. Have you ever had a problem or dispute with the county or any county employee? And if so, how did you handle it? And how will it affect the way you deal with that department if you're a commissioner? You know, I haven't had no problems with any of the employees or the commissioners, so. really answer that because I don't have nowhere to go with it. Um, and it's kind of on that same question um, as you deal with all the departments in the county, um, you feel that you would be able to deal with the budgets of the sheriff's office and the attorney and the treasurer, the hospital, all of these um, without any bias, any favoritism towards any certain department, anything like that? No, I feel I have a good working relationship with everybody in the county that they're in their job because they're qualified to do what they do. And you need to try to guide them or, or watch over them a little bit, but you need to have confidence in them for them making the decisions they do. I just thought of another one. That yeah, this one actually came up with a with a commissioner that we had um, that came in and took over a term or some of another one that had resigned. Um, if you were to get this position and in the process of being a commissioner, you 
made decisions that some of your clients in your personal business didn't agree with and it affected your business, your personal business, how would you handle that? I would have to make the decision for the community whether it affected me. I would look at it half full and half empty, you know, but you need to be a public employee and you need to do what's right for the public. Questions? I know we skipped a couple. I guess I'll go back. Tell us your proudest achievement, in, like, if you or you know, one or two or whatever. Well, tell us one of your proudest achievements. I guess one of my proudest achievements in town was when uh, Pat Blackbird came up with the idea of putting up a great big tree on the end of Maine and and decorating with Christmas lights and. I didn't know how well it would go over, but it uh, ended up being something I was very proud of at the end, and it, everybody in town looked at it, and it was all over newspapers and stuff, and it was, it was a nice thing for the community. Okay. What part did you play in that, Bill? I put the lights on around the tree. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I needed my time machine. Tell us about a mistake you have made in your life, uh, personally or professionally, and, and how you fixed it and what you learned from it. That's a really tough question. and we don't want to uh, perceive on our bad points because you always want to be remembered by your, your best achievements. And, uh, but everybody will be remembered for the worst things they've ever done and the best things. Nobody remembers the things in between. Um, so you always try to do what's <coughs> what you think is right. for yourself <coughs> and everybody else. Okay. Yeah, what's, what's your definition or what are the qualities of a good leader or a bad leader? Well, in a situation you need to be able to be <coughs> resourceful and take ownership and pride of what you do and be productive and the manner you do it in, be able to uh, have problem solving skills uh, so that everything runs smoothly and you can get the test, get hand done. Okay. I would follow this other one because it kind of goes hand in hand. Have you been on a team where someone wasn't pulling their own weight and how would you handle it? And I'm, I'm going to bring this up because as we and, and the interview before you, Mr. Corthall, brought it up as well. We live in a very generational environment now. You know, we have uh, many different generations of, of people that are, that are voters. They're, they're, you know, how are you gonna, how are you gonna look at being a leader and, and having somebody on your team member, or your team, and I, and I refer to the team as the entire time. How do you, how do you, when you, how do you address? those understanding generational issues the same aspect. Well, sometimes people aren't physically capable of doing it. So you do need to pull more weight than they do, or mentally. And you do need to help them out and do work harder than it. Sometimes you got to do more because they just can't do it. Or, you know, and if they're physical and mentally capable, you need to come to them and have them come on board. Don't be put them down about it. Just Get them to come on board with you. Okay, things are a lot better.
Hey, Bill, as a commissioner, you have to work with other electeds, department heads. <clears throat> you have to interact with employees all the time, uh, public meetings, not only commission, but um, you know all the other different boards that we sit on interacting regionally, statewide with other commissioners and, and agencies and partners. In that context, define respect. How do you how do you handle yourself that shows respect for all those different folks? Knowledge is a big thing, so when you're going to these meetings and looking at people, you want to. Uh, I'm an observer on lots of things, and I, I tend to watch people and take things in. And uh, so I like to learn what they know in, in ways that they can help me and make things, the process, go a lot better and faster for me. Last question was, who's the smartest person you know personally and why? Oh. Or maybe most inspiring or both? I think the smartest is Paul Bray. He's like an encyclopedia. You ask him questions and he has an answer for everything. He remembers so much stuff. Uh, he knows about birds, he knows about cars, he knows about everything in general, politics. He's uh, uh, very educated on lots of situations around politics he knows a lot about and that's a subject where everybody butts heads and argues and, and you need to be able to stand up for what you believe in whether the other person believes you or not um, and that can cause some conflicts and stuff but So I'll ask a follow-up to that. And we think of all these good questions we should have thought of last week when we were putting these in. Describe someone who's been a, a mentor or a shaping influence on your life. And, uh, recently, you know, Pat Plantler, he, that guy works day to, daylight to dark, and that's what he says he does for his fun, um, which is super hard to do. You know, if all of us did that, we, would, we wouldn't have any job left to do. Because his work ethic is just outrageous. He's a great asset to the community, the things he does to help people. And he goes way beyond what anybody else would do. Any other follow-ups, anyone? Do you have any questions for us? I know the commissioners have a tough decision to make. Um, you guys got nine applicants to choose from, and now you have an opportunity to to make a decision on one or another that you'd be part of. And it'd be great for you to choose one of us instead of leaving it lie until the election time where your decision counts now and, and that's what I'd like to see. Yeah, I agree with that. And if, you know, and if you guys can decide it, if it would have been nice ahead of time if they commission the interviewers could make the decision and break the tie because it, it's a broken process that needs to be changed if we're in a situation like this in the, in the future. Because uh, we need, you guys need to get work done to make the decisions for the people. So, like the HR department being down, you know, down a person and it took so long for, for the hiring process to follow through, which should have been a two-week deal. And I know there's, 
it sounds like there's been a lot of changes in the hiring process lately. Um, when in your hiring process has it changed lately? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's we just interviewed yesterday for a detective, and it's it's in the it's going quicker for us. I don't have time. I don't have time to, to dilly dally. Um, either you're all in or all out. Either you can jump on board or off. And so, um, you know, with the with the captain position, anybody who's interested in in, in the captain <coughs> or in house, you know, they had five days. And at five days, that's all there is. Um, you know, detective one, I ran it for a week and a half. Either you're interested or you're not. And either you're going to commit or you're not. And I'm going to move forward. I have a job that needs to be done. And, and I have a public that needs to be served. And um, I look at as law enforcement as being a, a customer service. And i got to make sure that we're providing that, that very best that we can in a timely fashion. I don't have time to wait. Uh, the world's not going to stop for me uh, dilly dallying around and not making a decision. And so um, I'm. I, I move through it very, very quickly. So, we got to make sure I'm doing the right things. Make sure I'm not putting the wrong people in the, in the wrong position. But um, if they're qualified and they meet the qualifications, then, then that's what they do. So, okay. I know in your process, you were in house filling, so then somebody's going to have to come in from out of house eventually. Mm -hmm. And that, oh, the, the detective position was, was open to the outside. Um, and we only had. We had four applicants, interviewed three, and the, the, the county and the under sheriff and the captain did that yesterday, and, and I let them make the recommendations to me, and then I'll make the final decision on, on what I find is going to be the best fit. And when I obviously when I look at the candidates, what are they going to bring to the table? How are they going to mesh and mold into the community? Um, I don't believe really they have me to talk out there. Um, I want somebody who's going to be Public friendly, user friendly, do an effective, efficient job for the county attorney and myself, and I'll make that that call. It's that so. We do have a new idea that we're trying out, which is to get a crime moratorium for 90 days, but it just hasn't caught on. I just can't get the criminals to agree. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But we're all in agreement. <laughs> <laughs> that's still turned out smart shit. Yeah, what's that? That's still turned out smart shit. Well, uh, <laughs> they've got about a 51% rate success so far. <laughs> yeah. It's a different world. It's a different environment. And things are changing, and I think that's where it's nice to, to, to actually be part of this. And, and we're not required to be part of this, but it's nice to be part of it because the fact is, is that there's our society is not what it is. Um, you know, I first got here, everybody thought Towns Mills Mayberry. It, and even I thought Towns Mills Mayberry. Now I sometimes feel like we're in the inner city of Detroit. And it's it, it's kind of the world we live in now. So um, I like to hear how people are planning to adapt to the way things are now. So. You know, if, if I was commissioner, I'd like to go around with, you know, like the road department, see what they're processes and see what things they'd like to be changed and stuff, you know. Uh, and, you know, the different options, like down at the county treasurer, and just uh, be more people, people friendly with people and know their concerns and their Yeah, there's a lot to see and a lot to know. Any other questions? So there's a, do you have the information for the forum? Is that I right? do, right here. This is kind of just a rundown for you. And uh, the mayor will be the moderator. Okay. You'll have three minutes to do kind of an introductory speech. There's only eight of you now, one dropped out. Um, so uh, it just kind of gives you uh, an idea what to expect Monday night. I'd like to thank everybody for your time. And, you know,
that's the process that everybody's going to have to grind their way through. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care. Thanks, Bill. Thank you. Okay, so our next interview is at 10.15, so we've got a little break here. I have a question, because I'm not real sure about the tree. Did she just...